Hey everybody, this is William from the Godzilla Files coming at you today with a new movie review and today we're going to be looking at the 1961 Mothra. So this just came out on Blu-ray and I've been really excited to talk about it. This is one of my favorite kaiju films, believe it or not. It's really enjoyable overall, but without giving too much away, I want to talk about some of the things that I really liked about it. So let's jump quickly into this review. So before jumping into the things I liked about the actual film, I just want to touch briefly on the actual Blu-ray release. So this is the first time Mothra has been available on Blu-ray here in the United States. And let me tell you, it is a great release. The video quality is pretty stunning for a film so old. You know, the original copy that I had was kind of beat up and not that great. So being able to upgrade to the Blu-ray was a no-brainer for me. Also, we get the Japanese cut, which has about an extra 11 minutes or so of footage. And that even looks better. So they, they did a great job of making these films look good and also sound good. So without a doubt, this is definitely a step in the right direction. And speaking of steps in the right direction, we actually got some special features, which is pretty rare for a kaiju film release. We got some audio commentary, which was actually pretty insightful. I didn't get to listen to the whole thing, but what I did listen to was pretty great. And also we got some trailers. So nothing too crazy, but it's still nice to see that there are some special features since nine times out of 10, these releases don't come with anything at all. So if you are on the fence about picking up this Blu-ray, I would strongly recommend it. I do think this is gonna disappear rather quickly because like I said before, this movie is actually really good. And I think a lot of people have been waiting for a great release. So now that all the Blu-ray information is out of the way, let's talk about the film itself. In my opinion, this is the best solo kaiju film to come out of this time. Whether we're comparing Rodan, Varan, I think Mothra is a step above them. And there's a lot of different reasons why. The first is obviously Mothra herself. The larva and even the flying form are truly stunning. And for 1961, they look really good. Her destruction sequences in this film are probably some of the best of this time. And the the fact that we get to see so much action from her is pretty rare when you think about her future appearances. So I actually really do like this. You know, my favorite scenes are actually with her in her larva form. I think there's a lot more to them. You know, whether she's swimming towards Tokyo and destroying ships or trying to be blown up by the Air Force, it all works really well and it looks good. So to me, they did a really great job here. Even the flying form is great as well. You know, yes, she doesn't do as much, but when she comes out of her coon for the first time, it's a really good scene. You know, I, I think the special effects are overall very good. Yes, are there some issues here and there? People are blue. Of course, this is still 1961 and Toho has not perfected this just yet. But they're on the right path and you can see a lot of future techniques here in this film. You could also see some future weapons like the heat laser that they have in this movie really does strike me as a prototype for the Mazer cannons. So like I said, this almost feels like a prototype Showa film and I I really do like that. So if you like the Showa films, I think this film will be right up your alley. So besides the kaiju and special effects, the human characters in this film are actually really strong. Yes, some of them are caricatures, but honestly, the actors playing them are so likable that you can actually look past all of that. And the perfect example of this is the reporter. He is truly one of my favorite characters. And he is so multifaceted that you know you don't know what you're gonna get with him. He can be serious, he can be funny, and even courageous like when he saves the baby on the dam like all those things from one character and it's great and you know this is the one thing that they did a great job in, in the, especially the early Showa films are human characters you know the human storyline is very interesting overall you know one other group of characters that I want to talk about are the fairies and the islanders so this is the first time that we see more of the civilization in Mothra versus Godzilla we didn't get to see much you know it was already kind of destroyed and even the island was completely barren but in this version there is actually a whole entire forest and just a lot more natives and it's kind of interesting because there's definitely a culture there I would have loved to have stayed a little bit more on the island kind of learn about that culture but it's cool that we got it as much as we did fairies like always play a prominent role when it comes to Mothra and the fact that they are stolen and their whole entire story of trying to get back to the island or at least back to Mothra is what's really driving the plot as well I do want to touch on the music because the music is very different comparatively to other kaiju films at the time and even the Godzilla series in general. There is something really beautiful about the music that is chosen. The main theme for Mothra is this big great piece. I, I don't know it, it just all the music really fits well and I think it, to the credit of the composer they went in the opposite direction of what the other films from Toho were doing at the time. So you know this score really stands out when you compare it to those films. 
Now, unfortunately, there are some issues with the film, and the biggest one is not a fault of the film itself, but because I saw this so late, I feel like I've seen this film multiple times. And that is because <laughs> Toho has remade this Mothra film multiple times. You know, this is a great story, but the fact is, we've seen parts of this story in Mothra versus Godzilla, Godzilla versus Mothra 1992, even the Mothra trilogy. Like, so <laughs> unfortunately, they, Mothra kind of got stuck in this type of story. So yeah, a lot of the beats feel the same. And that's only because I've watched so many kaiju films. But honestly, like if this is your first Mothra film, this is a great place to start. But for all Godzilla fans and kaiju fans in general, you might kind of feel like you've seen this before. So just be aware of that as you're going into it. While I did touch on the special effects a little bit, there are some that really don't hold up very well. Like a lot of the tanks look like toys. You know, again, this is 1961, but honestly, the special effects, they could do better and in some scenes it really does show. So with all this being said, honestly Mothra is still such a great film and any fan of the kaiju genre should really look into seeing it. While Mothra might not have been my favorite kaiju growing up, she has definitely grown on me and being able to see her first film in glorious blu-ray is a great treat. But alright guys, let me know in the comments below, did you pick up the Mothra blu-ray? What are your thoughts on it? I'm always excited to hear what you guys think. And as always, I hope you enjoyed this video.